Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgian Beer Brothers channel. Cedric here in Antwerp today with another French beer. Now this is one that I brought from my travels to uh, Brasserie Bourgonde in Vito near Safra. Um, and this might surprise you guys because it's a bit early on the year. But this is the Bière de Noël or literally Christmas beer. But the, the guys at the brewery describe this as a perfect um, bière d'hiver, so uh, an autumn beer. And since we have some autumn or wintry evenings these past few days, I thought this is well in its place. Now, they describe it as a red beer, so not necessarily a dark or a brown beer. Um, so I'm quite curious, as I said, I have never tasted these guys' beers before. Uh, and until now I've been pleasantly surprised. So let me first read the label for a moment. It says Bière vivante, non filtrée, non pasteurisée, de fermentation haute, brassée tradi traditionnellement et refermentée en bouteille. Brassée et embouteillée à la brasserie. Goût évolutif. So this means uh, basically a lively beer, unfiltered, unpasteurized, uh, of high fermentation, traditionally blue, brewed, uh, refermented in the bottle, and brewed and bottled at the brewery itself. Goût évolutif uh, is um, flavor evolution. So, yeah. Not a big fan of the label. This is a very uh, 90s clip art amateuristic label, uh, as many home brewers would would basically use but nonetheless uh, yeah I can have an opinion about the packaging but I'm not judging uh, I have seen this brewery it's a very small uh, enterprise only three guys I believe so if you see the beers that they make the amount of beers that they make yeah I can't feel bad about these labels and besides I like the other labels it also says uh, produit naturellement au choix, so uh, natural product from au choix, which means this is a local product um, and au choix is just the region. Okay, I actually think I said pretty much everything I could have said about this beer, so today is going to be another rather short video. Um, let's dive right in. Now, I do have their glass here, which is a, an old Pilsner style or a stout Pilsner style glass. Uh, and this is Bière de Vito Brasserie Bourgonde Servoise et Torix, which is one of their beers. But if I hear Christmassy beer or a wintry beer, this is not the glass that I'm immediately thinking of. So I'm gonna put this back on the shelf where it came from. And I do like drinking my wintry beers out of a chalice or at least uh, a standing glass or an elegant glass. So we are gonna use my trusted tasting glasses. And that all being said, let's go for it. Okay. Okay. They said that it was not very high in carbonation but even though I am pouring very, very, very carefully, very slowly, uh, I can't help but get a huge head of foam. So we are gonna drink this in two goes. So it is pretty much higher in carbonation than they actually said, uh, or than it said online. But nonetheless, indeed a a, a nice color um, going from from deep ruby red to to dark brown uh, somewhere around the the um, brownish caramel color um, beautiful when holding it up to the light I hope you guys can see this as well um, some dark beige foam which as you guys know I really don't mind uh, and this beer is supposed to be quite herbal, quite um, a bit spicy even, malty, uh, a bit hoppy and not at all too sweet. So yeah, you guys know that I love those beers. So I'm very, very eager to try this one. 
Okay, the fragrance doesn't lie. It smells very malty. It smells a bit hoppy. It smells a bit citrusy, which I find uh, quite intriguing for a beer of this, uh, this style. Also a bit vinous, I'm getting some tannins, some red wine, even though uh, it's not very winey, it's not uh, aged on oak or on, on wood in general. Uh, so again, I am intrigued. I do get some brown sugar. And a lot of herbs, uh, I'm thinking uh, a bit of clove maybe. Uh, some green herbs like like thyme or rosemary maybe a bit of licorice a lot of licorice actually <laughs> when the foam settles down a lot of licorice is coming through there Let's have another glance at that color. Yeah, very nice. Okay. Um, yeah, call me intrigued, as I said. So let's go for the taste. Cheers, you guys. Yeah. Um, first thing that that I get when it hits the tongue is indeed um, herbal, spicy. Um, spicy not in, in the way that peppers are spicy, but yeah, herbs and spices, um, a combination of, of flavors. Um, again, that rosemary thyme uh, thing is in there somewhere. Um, I'm still thinking some cloves, maybe some nutmeg even. And just like in the scent, um, a lot of licorice. Now, it is a bit yeasty, it is quite dry, and indeed a bit hoppy, um, but dry hoppy, like just the bitterness. Um, I do get a tiny hint of you know, like citrusy flavors, um, but I don't mean the tropical kind, I mean like, just a finishing touch, like a bit of orange. Um, yeah. The brown sugar that I got in the scent is completely not present in, in the flavor, which is a plus for me. Um, hmm. Yeah, I am leaning more towards clove and nutmeg. Um, I am very happy that uh, they didn't put any star anise or uh, cinnamon in this beer, because don't get me wrong, I love star anise in beer. One of my favorite Christmas beers is full of star anise, but it's um, yeah more growing to become a cliche rather than an interesting feature. So I kind of like this. Now you guys know that I love dry beers and I'm thinking that this might even be a bit too dry for me, uh, which is completely new to me as well. Yeah, I do get that tingling in the chin, in the back of the throat. Um, now don't get me wrong, I like it. It's nice, uh, but it is quite dry. Um, yeah, quite yeasty. I think that it is very, very well fermented. Now, I must admit that um, its best before date is the end of this month. So, yeah, that flavor evolution, <laughs> probably on point. Um, which means that it is bottled uh, two years ago. Now, this beer is, like I said, quite rather dry. It is so dry that it's past the point of thirst quenching and that it's actually making me a bit more thirsty, uh, which is of course 
commercially speaking, genius. Also, this beer, um, it's not that heavy, but it tastes a bit heavier. It is only a 6.5% ABV. And yeah, because of the, 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 the carbon dioxide and the flavor palette, it comes in at, at like 8.5 or 8. Um, so again, well done, giving this beer the illusion of being heavier than it is um, while making it so dry. I do think that this is an ideal beer to, to food pair with um, like game, like uh, with berry sauce or, or uh, brown lacquer sauce or anything with a sweet sauce or with fruit uh, on the plate with like pears and cranberries. Um, I think that this would be a very good match. Um, and I am thinking about the aftertaste because again, intriguing, intriguing is uh, the word. Uh, because one thing that I can't put my finger on, I do get a lot of roasty flavors as well, mainly in the aftertaste. So I'm guessing that a bunch of, of roasted malts are used. Um, and I do get some dark, dark chocolate, but like the 90% cocoa chocolate, not like the very bitter kind. Um, so yeah, again, very nice. I think this is a very interesting brew. Uh, yeah. Interesting is the key word here, intriguing and interesting. Which means that I'm struggling to score this beer. Um, I like it, I li very much like the looks of it. Very interesting scent, um, intriguing flavor palette. I would call this, yeah, let's say a three, maybe 325. Um, just because I don't really know what to do with this beer. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, well brewed, nice, very interesting, like I said. I do think that this is a uh, interesting beer to bring to a tasting as well. Um, just to give people something that they just don't know. So that all being said, um, yeah, let's finish up here. You do see that I'm not drinking too quickly right now. Um, as usual, if you guys like this video, let me know down in the comments or hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe and hit the bell icon. You'll be the first to know whenever I upload something. And yeah, if you want to support this channel, just share a video somewhere and spread the love, spread the word. Um, and I'll see you guys on Monday with another brew review. And maybe I should prepare another brewery breakdown, but we'll see when, when we get there. Until Monday, cheers you guys.